who were encountered along the route and each one was kind of gathered up and then came with us or um, this one on the bottom left is at one of the pause points on the route we this is a screening of the K Foundation burning a million quid um, as part of the kind of walk event um, and these walks became uh, kind of repeated so often both with these sort of public facing invited um, mass walkings but also the more uh, kind of and we've always really considered the experience of the walk as the artwork you know it's the event that's important the experience of the event but we have then worked with some of the materials so these are images from a residency at Camden Arts Centre where we we work to try to reconstruct some of the atmospheres and um, kind of uh, environments of the walk route within the studio space in the in the gallery um, and we used some of the texts that we'd uh, collected and some of the found objects and various artifacts and produced a kind of those slides are terribly dark I can't you'd see them in a very dark room but in here they're tricky to see but we we produced a kind of performance installation that that retold some of the stories both imagined and real of the found objects from the walk and and kind of tried to conjure up uh, some of those uh, atmospheres and environments um, so uh, after a while after a few years of kind of producing this work that was very much centered on this kind of core local experience we were invited to um, do a residency at SpaceX Gallery in Exeter, um, which was a lovely opportunity, but we also realised, well, you know, the kind of point of our project and our method so far has been the exploration of our familiar. So to go somewhere else, what does that mean to go? And, you know, where did we begin um, with that process? So we, we kind of turned that on its head and we invited people to... Uh, come to the gallery and to share their walks with us either by drawing it on a map or giving us directions or by actually taking us out on a walk so we spent uh, a week of really intensive time walking Exeter and um, interacting with people basically sharing their routine walks um, uh, following instructions that they've given us and from that we produced a set of text works um, this one we call the, the M5 Marching Song, um, which uh, were produced as these kind of ephemeral uh, bit <laughs> bits of text. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very important one. So different walking in a, in a city like Exeter when you're used to walking in the East End of London where you can walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. In Exeter, after about 30 minutes you get to the edge <laughs> and then the imagination of walking in the countryside is that oh how lovely how much nicer than urban walking but actually no, it's no, not no, no there are no pavements there are unless you find a marked footpath you're either kind of climbing over barbed wire and hedges or you're squeezed along the edge of verges when cars just go roaring past so it was a really interesting contrasting experience so these were kind of stickers and flyers and posters and handed out to people in the street and distributed all over the city. Um, uh, cards in newsagents' windows, all sorts of things like that. Um, and um, then there we also made a set of larger format posters which were on the concourse uh, at the train station um, for, I think they were there for almost a year in the end, uh, which told some of these kind of stories of, of unusual encounters and unexpected um, uh, aspects of, of the city. So I guess what we, what we were kind of coming to at this point is, is walking as a, as a way of interacting with a place, of having a conversation with a place and with um, facilitating sort of enc encounters with people and building an understanding um, that, that runs uh, kind of contrary to things like tourist images or descriptions of places and, and, and is more closely aligned with real lived experience and understanding of, of how places um, work. Um, 
This, we then continue to work quite a lot in text, and this is a, a permanent um, kind of architectural text piece that's installed in Bethnal Green Old Town Hall, which was derelict for many years of our, our walking project. It was always on our route we walked past. Um, then in 2010, it was bought by a Singaporean hotelier and turned into a luxury hotel. Um, and as part of the, um, part, one of the planning uh, requirements that was placed on him was that he had to invest a certain amount of money in artworks. Uh, does still exist as a collaboration, though we're not making live work together at the moment, but we still exhibit things and do occasional talks and things like that. So our practices have kind of diverged, and that's partly because our routines have taken very different um, uh, lines, I suppose. We none of us live in the same place that we did before so that immediacy of that route being core to our routines has shifted but also things like this have happened and so this is the first kind of walking thing that I did on my own without being part of walk 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 and this is a piece called perambulator which I first produced for Lewisham Art House in 2011. And that's my son, uh, Ernest, who was then seven months old in the pram. And this was a really simple kind of idea about um, gathering, just from my observation of walking with a, a pram and already being interested in routine walks and everyday city walking was how transformed my experience was just by this new thing, so the politic, the personal politic of that um, and so last May with another baby Ruby I had to keep having babies to keep the project going you know he could walk he didn't want to go in the pram anymore I don't know what I'm going to do when she's yeah anyway um, absolutely yeah um, so I, I spent a month working um, in Scotland with an organisation called Deveron Arts who uh, work in a, they're based in a town called Huntley, which has a population of 4,000 people. And their uh, strapline is the town is the venue. So they're an arts organisation. They just have a small office in the town and that's it. And they have a rolling programme, a continuous programme of artist residencies uh, with one third local and two thirds global. So one British artist and then two international artists come each year. Um, and... Uh, so I spent a month there with both of my children, walking um, with parents, predominantly with mothers, and talking about walking with prams. And one of the uh, things that came out of that project, one of the sort of artistic outcomes, is this set of photographs, um, which I have been calling kind of testing the edges. So I, I followed every path that led out of the town to see what the point of accessibility was, what the limit was for walking out of the town with a pram, so where can you not go any further. Um, so these are, <laughs> <laughs> these are some of the um, points we got uh, stuck on. So there's a set of, of, of photos of this. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, that did involve a bit. It was it was tricky though. Sometimes, when do you decide to turn back? You've like bumped along this riverside path for quite a way, and you're like, "Is this? Are we at the edge? Really? Am yeah. I at the edge? I could go a bit further." Mm -hmm. So it was quite interesting to have to. I thought it would be much more straight, clear cut as to where the stopping point would be, but it it was. And it was weather dependent too, because if the ground's muddy, you know, it's much harder than if it's dry and all of those kind of things. But it was a really great experience. And, and as part of it, I also produced some bigger, more performative events. So um, this was a pram parade. Um, so I invited pram users in the town to join me. Um, there's a, a ruined castle um, just outside the town and there's this kind of avenue of trees that runs between and it's, you know, it's a kind of, it's a strolling route. It's a, it's a pram walking route, basically, you know, it's the place people stroll up and down if you're going for a short walk. So we had this, this kind of parade along the avenue, it's called. And then um, I also did a, a group walk to one of the edge points, you know, one of the points uh, past which it's almost impossible to take a pram. Um, and so here we are with a, a group of people 
up a hill called the Clashmack, which looks out over the whole town. And this is the kind of last point that you can get to. And we had a picnic at the top. And I, again, what was really fascinating was that most of the men and women who came on the walk had never walked out of the town um, before, with or without a pram. So they'd, ne they'd, they'd always perceived it as not being a thing that's particularly possible to do. So there's, I mean, oh yeah, a month is not enough, you realise when you're in that situation. I was kind of dying to go back and do more, but for now that's um, that. And then I want to touch upon another walking project which I've been doing really locally to here, um, and I just started last uh, summer. So I was invited by an artist called Hilary Powell to uh, make a walk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, to, um, to make a walk that connected Stratford Station with Sugarhouse Studios, just up the road in Stratford. And um, I walked, walked it a bit and explored and, and was really struck by how much edible produce there was in this really kind of unexpected, uh, semi-industrial kind of zone kind of round the back of the canal and this, the bits of light industrial estate that weren't sort of demolished for the Olympic Park and the fringes of the Olympic Park. And so I ended up um, making a walk which I called Stratford Jam. So I collected, um, I collected fruit and berries and whatever I could from the route, which looks, looks a bit like this. You can see the ghosts of the Olympics. Um, and I made jams and jellies and chutneys, and then I took people on a guided walk along the route, showing them where the edible plants were and gave them jars of jam and produce. And now I'm actually working, I haven't had confirmation yet whether it's being funded, but I'm hoping to develop this further um, in collaboration with the uh, Olympic Park, with the London Legacy Development Corporation, because actually it turns out there are the, the park, the new zoning bylaws of the park, um, forbid picking. Uh, so it's actually illegal to pick a blackberry on the Olympic Park. The Olympic berries. Yeah, and, and actually the boundary zone isn't just the Olympic Park, it actually extends out. So actually it turns out the jam I made last year is illegal jam. But... Adriana Marquez, who's the head of arts and culture at the London Legacy Corporation, is a very interesting woman who does not shy away from com commissioning work that deals with controversy. And she, I'm speaking with her about making a project that highlights the idiocy of this bylaw, basically, by either by picking, marking the line between which is the legal and which is the illegal blackberry and, <laughs> and kind of uh, making some walks that, uh, doing some walks and kind of uh, community jam making workshops and um, celebrating those by, uh, with an event on the park. So that's something that's kind of in the pipeline hopefully for this summer. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Talking about because I think the whole I think people I think that is um, something that we spoke about a lot at the conference yeah. that you yeah. had, which was that um, this thing about public and private property yeah. and that, that areas that present as if they're public yes. uh, and actually very private. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but um, I. Uh, went to Westfield the other day. I didn't tell you. Mm. See that. I went to. I went to uh, I went to get my hair cut. I feel like I have to defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do my hair cut at Tony and Guy, okay, and it was fifty-one pounds. And uh, <laughs> there's no fucking hairdressers in Stratford, mm. by the way. So if anyone knows, you yeah. should open up a salon and make a killing. On the bridge, uh, they were stopping people. They were doing yeah. stop and search. Yeah. Really? Like, um, UK border hours. agency often have patrols at Stratford because of the right. transport right. hub and because of the demographic. So I have an update for you. Mm. I have an update for you. Last week, they weren't just doing stop and search. They had exactly like an airport. Yeah. A, a metal detector. Mm. No, on the bridge. Mm. And they just pick people yeah. to go through or not mm. on the way in or out. So oh. I started mm. to feel and. Mm. 
oh my god, I got like jumped on. Mm. And I was like, sorry, sorry, it's cool, I'll put it away. So I, mm. And he was like, why are you doing it? I said, I'll just talk to you, I'll put it, I'll put it away. Actually, mm. I can film, but I'm not going to mm. get into it yeah. with you. Yeah. I'm allowed to film if I, whatever I want. But um, they just like, it was just hardcore, it was just hardcore, just yeah. the energy that those sorts of things create. And I was uh, really quite shocked, really it, shocked. I, I it is shocking. Really shocked. Yeah, really but when you're in it, it is yeah, shocking. Yeah. Like the idea of someone coming to you is they don't pick that fairy. Like, yeah. I mean, nobody's, nobody's no, really, I know. No one is going to do that. No. no one, well, well, the thing is, nobody's is. going to do that to me, and I think that's what's really important to remember, is, this, is it's all about who you are and what you look like mm. as well. It's where, you know, if somebody comes up to you and says what you're doing, what you're doing, and you look like me and you sound like me, then you're probably going to be absolutely fine, aren't you? But that, and that's what you know is is the real one of the real dangers um so i really hope that the project will be able to go forward and that we will be able to do something they're also looking at doing a um a mobile orchard that's on wheels in the olympic park so that it gets around the legislation as well so that it's not actually in the ground but it can be so they're, they're looking at but I mean, I think at the heart of it, the bylaw just needs to be challenged and changed. Absolutely. Yeah, um, because it's a bizarre thing to, to um, assert. So those are some of my kind of artistic, creative, walking um, works. The other thing I've been working on um, sort of for the last five years is... Um, a project that seeks to kind of connect people who are using walking creatively and critically. Um, and that I've been doing through a vehicle called the Walking Artist Network. So with a couple of colleagues and other artist collaborators, we worked on the idea of this quite a few years ago and held a kind of initial meeting and it was all really exciting, but nothing it kind of then went, nobody had the, the administrative energy to pursue it because everybody's busy doing their own work but when I then went to work at University of East London I uh, found a funding strand that's specifically for networking through the AHRC the Arts and Humanities Research Council and through that I got £45,000 to facilitate the Walking Artist Network as a project over two years except I've had two rounds of maternity leave in it so it's been extended to four years which has been really um, great so um, that's kind of taken the form of bringing people together who are using walking in their practices and not necessarily people who self-identify as artists so I've been really interested um, in connecting with geographers with anthropologists with um, criminologists with architects, with all sorts of different people from disciplinary backgrounds where they may use walking as part of their process or their outcomes, but um, that I feel uh, have something to kind of add. So that's been a really fantastic way to encounter a lot of really varied um, uses of walking. Um, and these are some of the meetings that we've held. So this is a group of people walking near near Chelsea Theatre was our base for one of the first meetings. Um, look for signs and follow them. It's from a, this is from a walk along the Thames in uh, 2012. Um, uh, and some notes after that. Um, this is a walk in, uh, near the Centre of, for Alternative Technology in Wales uh, last summer. Um, Oh, that's my last slide. And this year we will um, uh, walk in Cornwall. Uh, so that just in two weeks' time we'll be meeting um, in, in Cornwall and that uh, meeting will um, kind of finish with a, with a one-day public symposium called Where To? The Future of Walking in the Arts, um, which the call for papers for that was... A, was a, a, a request for future visions, manifestos and interventions that might imagine the way that walking uh, exists within the arts. Um, so kind of out of that, and I won't take too much longer, what about five more minutes? I have no idea because it depends yeah. on... Uh, okay, and what we're going to do next? Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, aware too, absolutely. Um, 
So what I'm working on for that at the moment, because I, at that, my funding comes to a close in July, um, and at that I want to kind of think about... Um, well, at the moment, I'm really thinking about what I want to do next personally on a creative level and how walking sits with that. And I also want to present at this conference onto, you know, some, some way of kind of drawing together some of the strands from the network and what the work that the network has done. And at the moment, I'm really interested in a few different themes. And, and um, I suppose they are the... The, the kind of potential of walking um, as a method for engaging with place, um, the potential of walking um, in terms of dialogue, both with people and with, with place. So how, how is walking different from sitting in a room with somebody talking? And there are some fantastic, there's some fantastic writing around this that comes out of... Um, Geography. There's a guy called uh, John Anderson who's based at Cardiff who's written a lot about um, how walking um, and talking with somebody and walking through the places that you're talking about, so kind of walking interviews basically, allow people to conjure up and access memories and thoughts and ideas that would be much more difficult for them to access if they were just sitting in a room thinking about the places. Um, so I'm interested in that. I'm interested in the activism in walking. I'm interested in how um, uh, walking can challenge these notions of public and private space and assert our freedoms. And I, I believe very strongly that if we don't exercise our freedoms, we, we may lose them. Um, but I'm also interested in the kind of sensibilities within art and culture more widely, predominantly at the moment, that are making walking more visible and more apparent to people. So why is there this sort of upsurge in interest? Is it part of the interest in participatory and dialogic and sort of socially engaged practices in general? Or is there something more compelling about the idea of taking people for a walk or using um, walking uh, within artwork. So those are some of the kind of questions that I'm working on at the moment.